Welcome back to The Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Actual Play Campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Jill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the Shifter Elder tonight. And Joel Gorman, playing Wrath, the Azamar Warlock. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the Human Swashbuckler Rogue. And we're joined once again by our good friend, I'm Ginny D, and I'm playing Ava Blight Ward, the Abjuration Wizard. Human, human one. <laughs> <laughs> now it sounds suspicious. Indeed, it does. But thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome. We're the Dungeon Dudes. Kelly and I create all sorts of content for, for TTRPGs and Dungeons and Dragons over on our YouTube channel, which you can check out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. While you're there, be sure to check out Ginny D's amazing content as well. She makes also, great videos about Dungeons and & Dragons, um, and we are so thrilled to be having her here to play Dungeons & Dragons with us for such a long arc of this campaign. It's been amazing. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. With that, let us return to Drakenheim. <laughs> Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over, into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Wilhelm, Rudy, Wrath, and Ava had delved deep into the Von Fritz mines after having secured Castle Sodden. Using a passage dug from the well of the castle keep to the mines to infiltrate past the outer defenses of the mines, our heroes battled their way through contaminated miners and have now come upon the central mine shaft that is partially flooded. As our heroes dove down, you swim deeper and deeper beneath the earth. And once again, as you dive down, you come to the bottom of this mine shaft, where the apparatus of the base of the elevator that would be controlled from up above, as well as the the pipes that would be designed to suck the water up and out of the mines terminate. Here at the base of the mine shaft, a fresh mining vein has been dug out into the rock and silt of the, of the earth, following along a mineral vein. But this mineral vein is not one of coal or iron ore or gold or silver, for delirium is growing deep within the earth of Todsfeld. The influence of the contaminated water seeping deep underneath has collected and pooled here with such a critical mass that the crystals themselves begin to form in the earth. This rich seam of fresh delirium outside the walls of Drakenheim a grim reminder of the spreading contamination that threatens to overtake this world. As you swim down through the freshly dug passage, once again, you come to a point where the air pressure has created a pocket that you can escape from as well. Again, the change in the humidity and the forces deep 
beneath the water, the water here make your stomach lurch and you feel the pressure in your heads from the water and the, the air all, all around you. The passage continues before, for some time, the glimmering delirium crystals showing clear signs that they're of extraction in the recent past. And as you come towards the end of the passage, you see a great glow from the yawning cavern mouth ahead. This may be your last opportunity to prepare for what lies ahead. Any spells that you would have cast at the start of the day are still in effect, as is your hero's feast. So I still have, um... So neutralizing field is one hour, and I've had it up since when we first entered through the well. Is that mm -hmm. still active, or...? I would say at this point, it, you're getting towards the end of the duration of, of the effect. Okay. Here as well, um, at the base of this mining shaft, there is another one of those sort of miners respite rooms, another door li lying off where they've kind of set up a room where the miners could take a break from their, their, their shifts as, as well. It is uh, um, sort of veering off from this, this main passage. I don't have much that I need to prepare. How's everybody? I'm gonna drink some potion. Okay. And uh, recharge one of my spell slots with my rod. Okay. You can all uh, roll me a d6. Three. One. I'm so sorry. Ready? Four. Okay. I'm so sorry, everyone. Unfortunately, rubbing and drinking around here, there are no supplies to be scavenged. Someone oh, ate was, everything. That was not bad. <laughs> and then a word. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I don't have any potions, but do y'all have anything that could help boost? If not, it's okay. But you, you need hit points? No, just anything that might help in general. Oh, uh... Got yeah. anything fun? Do you, do you still have the potions of, like, invulnerability or heroism? I have a potion of heroism. Um, but we already have temporary hit points. Does, has anybody lost their temporary hit points? Me. The potion of heroism also... Is it is a bless effect yeah. for whoever drinks it. I don't have any temporary hit points. Can I see if I have a patch on my robe of useful items that is a spell spell scroll containing one spell of first to third level? Sure, roll me a d20. Oh, that's hard. I'm, I can't do the rounded edge. This is why sharp edged is important. 19. Okay. Um, you rip off a couple patches of, of your um, of your robe, um, and in the process to try to find the 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 one that has the spell scroll in it, uh, you do produce um, four potions of greater healing, uh, as well as a uh, spell scroll of third level. Um, and you also end up uh, pulling out um, a uh, wooden ladder and um, a bag of 100 gold. Nice. Uh, okay, I'll just, like, after pulling a whole wooden ladder out of my coat, <laughs> sort of lay it aside. <laughs> Does anyone want a potion of greater healing? I'll, I, I, will I take have one a few, too. but I'll take so another. Everybody can have one. Oh, thank you. The spell scroll, um, in this case, do you have any desired scroll that you would like? Oh, I don't know. I thought it was going to be random. Greater's 20? Yeah. Yeah, well, you can give me give me your top three, and I'll oh roll a D D3. You, you, uh, hmm. I feel like I'd have to look it up. Haste. Haste. Oh, haste. haste. And... Slow. <laughs> okay, and Fly? and uh, what's it? What's one that we can mess with that? Hypnotic. Hi. I have hypnotic. Okay. Cool. Okay. Haste. Uh, 
Um, we'll go with fireball. Ooh. Okay, yeah, that's all good. <laughs> Everyone loves fireball. It's a scroll of haste. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Now, everybody gather around. We're in the depths of the mine. Mm -hmm. We've outran a giant worm. We killed a bunch of miners. <laughs> we have defeated Castle Sodden. We are this close to claiming Todd's Felt. You all are the best crew ever for this job. And there's nothing that can stop us. Not even a giant brain. You can all get 19 temporary. Oh, yeah. The whole time it was like, best? Mm, unlikely. <clears throat> there aren't many things that could stop us. Um, Ava. But you know what? Somehow I'm encouraged anyway. Do you do you have anything that you can put in my ring? That's uh, cool. Yeah. Or um, or. Uh, how don't much room do you have? I have five levels. Whoa. I have one empty ring. Um. Anything that you think that could help the the whole gang? Well, I have. Uh, uh, if you want fifth level, I have Wall of Force also. Um, uh, you know, but I only have one fifth level slot left, so I feel like I should give you something lower, or otherwise yeah. just transferring one of my spells to you. Uh, I have. Uh, you can you could take a counter spell just in case. Ooh, maybe. Um, or I have Polymorph, uh -huh. or uh, I don't know if we should try Sickening Radiance again, <laughs> or Fireball. Polymorph might be helpful. I could save the king. That's always if you're if you're willing to. Sure, I'll cast a polymorph into your ring. Bam! Yeah. Polymorph is renamed now the spell of saving the king. The king. The king saver king polymorph saver spell. Rudy, yeah. I want you to Thank have you. this. It's a potion of heroism. Um, Thank you. It'll help. How how long does it last for? It lasts uh, for a minute. It, for one hour. Oh, it's one hour. You gain 10 temporary hit points, which wouldn't stack, but you also gain the benefits of the Bless spell, so you're adding a d4 to all of your attack rolls. And saving throws. And saving throws. Thank you. So you knock that back. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> okay. This is your last opportunity to prepare for what lies ahead. Oh God. <clears throat> I do have potions of poison. Does anybody want to take those? And just like well, end we're already, it. We're, well, oh. <laughs> end it all for a second. I thought you meant like to save against, like to be not poison. I'm like, we're already immune to poison. Why would we? Just really? for, for flavor at this point, yeah, because I can't position against that speech you just gave him and us being so great. Yeah, that one was not in character. I just I was looking through my bag and I saw potions. I have eleven potions of poison. Um, I guess the question is, this is the best time if you wanted to see what poison tastes like, since we are immune to poison. Mm. Yeah. <gasps> I have scientific curiosity over this. Would you like a potion of poison? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chug it. We're immune to poison? Yeah. I have, um... I'm gonna drink the potion of poison and then take detailed notes on what it tastes like. <laughs> so hopefully you can detect poison in the future. Tastes like orange crush. Ooh. Oh, why is poison so delicious? <laughs> of course. It's been telling us all these years <laughs> with its horrible taste. <laughs> I have one more thing that I want to do. I have three random syringes of unknown magical substance, and I would like Ava to potentially tell me what they oh, are. Oh, I'd love to look at those. Very Where did you find things. those? In Freed's workshop. Oh. Pluto also or has not like Freed's, like underneath the. Pluto has a bunch too that yeah. he's just been carrying. Around. <laughs> and I say, you know what? Since you were able to identify the ones in in Freed's pouch, certainly. I was wondering if you could tell me we found these underneath the Albrecht University. Take out a little uh, set of glasses from my bag that has like nine lenses that go down in front of it <laughs> and examine. Okay. And you read just the tiny label. Uh, the label said. It's just Nutrition really tiny. Listen, I'm 63 years old. I don't have the best vision. I probably need oh, this glasses. Has 46 grams of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> if the poison doesn't get you. So it's not that we didn't know what they were, it's that you couldn't read them with your... You never bothered to show us. You were like, these are uh, these are undetermined it's like voices. A, it's like a font size four or something. It was really hard. Even I had trouble reading Listen, it. 
And I can see <laughs> invisible creatures. I didn't bring my bifocals with me, okay? <laughs> Okay. I need them. That's why you need non-focals like these. Shh. <laughs> 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 um. All right. There are three. These syringes uh, are all the effects of potions um, that may be a- applied uh, to whoever consumes them. Thank you. Um, the first one is effectively a potion of invulnerability. <gasps> The second one is a potion of speed. <gasps> and the third one is a unique potion called a potion of maximum power. <gasps> a potion of maximum power, um, the first time you cast a damage dealing spell of fifth level or lower within one minute after drinking the potion, instead of rolling the dice to determine the damage, you just use the highest number possible for every die. It's like a channel divinity in a syringe. Yeah. Mm. Are you going to chug it? Or inject it. Yeah, I okay, mean, I... Do it through your eye. It'll make it faster. That's horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that Will so it? much. <laughs> Thanks, sorry. I hate it. Um, ha- so if we, were, if I were to use a syringe during combat, what kind of action would? It as be? long as you use the effect within one minute, um, okay. it's a, it's an action to administer the potion. So okay, so I it, should do it before we fight, but only just before. That would be pragmatic. So, who wants invulnerability and who wants speed? See, I would have taken invulnerability. That, <laughs> that feels a good one. I, yeah. if, but also, well, I also have haste, so two people can be sped up now. You know, does speed? Does a potion of speed give you haste, or does it? Yes. Just, okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So Ooh. we can we can haste two people basically. You've presumably you two. If yeah, knowing what we know about potions, if Rudy. Has drink just drank drink. a potion. Oh, you're smiling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this happens. <laughs> oh, so you can't... Yeah, it'll replace the effects of the last potion. It won't no, replace it. No. it might we cause... roll on the potion miscability table to oh, find no. out what happens. So maybe it'd be better if you did the potion of speed and I cast haste on yeah. you so there's no possibility yeah. of cross-contamination. And then yeah. would you like invulnerability? I would like that. Yeah? There Even though I'm already invulnerable, I can't die. Are you still die. okay? I can totally die. I just don't think I can. <laughs> okay, okay so potion of vulnerability, dying. heroism, speed, spell super max power. Spell super max power. Sorry to force Sorry. the heroism on you. It's okay. I'll take it. Okay. It might be far. But you, you have speed. I have to speed. Be a hero, and then <laughs> <laughs> you take this needle, and that's what makes you become a hero. Yeah, that's what Captain America does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I've learned anything. Drag. Greatness was thrust upon me. <laughs> and then pull on the shade. <laughs> How long does the potion of speed last? One minute. Okay, so, so we also... just do these at the very last minute. We're going to like walk so in there and the brain will be like, the... I will destroy it. We're all going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> the whole first round, we all just are like, I use my action to take drugs. <laughs> oh. I hope we don't get demonetized for that. <laughs> magic drugs. <laughs> All drugs are magic. Kids. <laughs> Cut that out of the edit. Okay. The dungeon dudes say drugs are cool and it's magic. Some stuff's good, like Advil. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Your preparation's complete. You proceed down the corridor into a colossal chamber. This massive cavern is a rich deposit of fresh crystalline delirium growing up from the depths of the earth. Supported by two large columns of stone, the st- instead of stalagmites and stalactites, it's just delirium crystals on top and on the bottom. Ooh. In fact, the entire ceiling, if you've ever opened up like one of those geodes, yeah. the entire ceiling is that except spiked delirium crystals that jaggedly reach out from the ceiling with threatening points. Um, And then two columns of rock, more crystals jutting out from them support the the ceiling. This chamber is eerily similar to the the chamber that you saw in your sister's dreams. Except not made of meat. Except instead of made of meat, it's made of rock and delirium. Um, A thin haze hangs over the chamber. As you see throughout the chamber, interspersed about the delirium crystals 
dark red and black veins hold several victims in pods of a yellow-orange fluid throughout this chamber, including one at the far end where you recognize your sister trapped within. The rest of the, these pods hold several members of the castle staff. Is this where we're coming in? Yes, correct. In the center of the chamber, upon three pedestals of strange alien metal are th a three-point apparatus that channels energy into a glimmering pool. The energy beams resounding from the orb and those two green eye sort of things mm -hmm. um, pool energy into the pool energy into the, the, the pool, creating a shimmering barrier over top of it. Um, and as you enter into the chamber, slithering out from the various, from the pool itself, is a membrane of flesh and tendrils that connect into all of the pods and crisscross across the floor. And slithering out, f almost formed from the flesh, without skin, is a simulacrum of Everett Freed. And he says, I'll make this easy on you all. And beside you, forming on the wall, an empty pod opens up and says, it will be easier for you if you go quietly. I'll make it painless that way. <laughs> Look over at Ava, readying a, a, a syringe. And uh, I just say, Ever, laughing ain't easy. And I ain't never chosen the easy route. You best believe we're coming here. So to be take it, you then. on. The form of Everett Freed collapses, and as it does so, the wall behind you closes with a squelching noise, Joseph forming Trump. a bear. Yep, we yep, yep, <laughs> yep, you can, you can. Haste me, haste me! <laughs> hey, oh yeah, I'll do my thing and then... <laughs> We're trying to like panic. As you, it, as, as you power yourselves up, the pool glimmers for a moment as several clawed paws pull their way out of the pool. Can I, can I cast haste before? How long does haste last, though? A minute, right? Right? It's been. E, um, I was wondering if I'd have time to cast that before we are. You'd have time to either inject yourself or cast, or haste. cast haste. Do you? Okay, I'll do the injection first. Yeah. Okay. As so the pool, as the clawed limbs pull themselves out of the pool, the limbs drag torsos. Uh, and four, uh, each of these creatures has four clawed limbs and a torso that is simply an engorged brain. <gasps> I know they're evil, but I think intellective hours are so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta say that intellect devourers are the creatures that scare me the most in all of D&D. Oh yeah? yeah? They are terrifying. This feels like uh... But then one, we started, one you know? brain floats up from the pool. Instead of on clawed limbs, a mass of tentacles just dangles down under, underneath it as it bobs and floats forward. In this moment, a thrum of energy resounds out from the pool, along the tendrils connecting the pool to the pods. And you sense the occupants of the pods begin to writhe as something crawls underneath their flesh, like their mouths are going to crack open and burst into an array of tentacles if they are not freed in time. Oh. Roll for initiative. Oh, oh, okay, there's a lot going on here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> oh my god. Oh no. Ava? One, well, four. Okay. 
Ten. Ten for Rudy. Wrath? Twenty-two. And Wilhelm? Thirteen. Coming here after playing a barbarian who gets advantage on initiative. Painful. Mm. Painful. <laughs> Once you have an advantage on initiative, going from it is... Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. I just lost my advantage on initiative because I replaced my crossbow with my sword. Mm -hmm. oh. So, sword's doing better, but I don't get my, like, 30 initiatives. <laughs> okay. To be clear, there are the pods throughout the room, each of which hold occupants, members of the castle staff. If they are not freed in time, they will transform into creatures not unlike Freed's previous form. In the midst of the chamber, that glowing pool is protected by the three anchors that secure the field of force protecting it. And meanwhile, you hear the distant rumbling of the approaching worm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so you, there are. Perhaps we made a mistake. <laughs> so I am setting several clocks here, just to give you the awareness of, of what's at stake. Oh, we should have just gotten in the pod. First, <laughs> the longest timer will be that of the arrival of the worm. Okay. There are individual timers for each of the pods. Oh God. And then there is the strength of the shield overall. Let's race. To begin, Wrath, it is your turn. Can you describe the closest pod to me? So I, if I if I begin to run towards that okay. pod with three people. So in total, you can see that there are 10 occupants across all the pods. There are two larger pods that hold three people um, wi within them. And moving up to the first pod, you can see it is, it is a fleshy membrane of blackened necrotic flesh, which can, holds a sort of bulbous sack that is in a thin membrane filled with a yellow, yellow orange glowing liquid. Inside, the occupants with their with their pale expressions, their eyes are beginning to glow with octarine light with, within. As you can see that there are very thin sort of umbilical cords and tendrils that are locked into, um, like locked into their temples that are filling their minds with whatever's going to transform them into a, a, another creature. Does it look like, can I, tell if I just sever this connection, if that's going to be <laughs> detrimental to their overall health and well-being. Um, no less detrimental to their health than uh, what's going to happen to them if they remain in these pods and are transformed. That is a great uh, observation. <laughs> so um, the tendrils that are on the floor coming up to the pod Mm -hmm. I want to blast them. You want to blast the, the, the tendrils themselves? Yeah. Give me a perception check. Oh. Uh, I get a 12. There are so many tendrils crisscrossing the floor that you, you as you go to aim, the aim, you realize that there's just so many connection points that you might want to focus on the pod itself rather than what's connected, connecting to it. Okay, then I want to cast uh, telekinesis and okay. try to rip the pod open. And try to rip the pod open? Yeah. Sounds great. Give me a spell casting ability check then then with, with telekinesis as you focus your telekinetic grip. And actually what you, what, what you realize in this moment is that you can grab the person within with telekinesis and pull them free telekinetically. Okay, I do that. I'm gonna grab the closest person and okay. try to pull them out through the membrane. Alrighty. I got a 17. With with your your result, you telekinetically grab onto um, uh, a, a man um, within within the pod and you rip him free and he is pulled through through the membrane and collapses on the ground, begins coughing on, on, on the ground. <coughs> um, I have saved you. Free, freed from the, uh, from, from the pod. Uh, and that is my, uh, my turn. Okay. With that, we go to um, the first action for 
Everett Freed. Reaching up from the membranes, a pair of colossal contaminated hands forms in the room. One by Wrath. Uh oh. And who's closest to the front? It's me. Okay, one by Ava. <laughs> High five. High five in. I'm focused oh, on the pod, and this this this, this uh, disembodied hand appears behind me. And so, the hands appear, grab the two of you by the by the scruffs uh, uh, of the back, and attempt to fling you into the room. Um, so I need contested strength checks, and I have advantage on this check because you're medium-sized creatures. Uh, I got an 11. I also got an 11. Okay, I get a 26 against uh, Ava yeah. and an 18 against Wrath. <laughs> okay. Um, so the hands fling you both um, 40 feet uh, in, towards the intellect of ours. <laughs> I mean, that's, I did need to get further to this one. That, that's the 40? I think that's 40, yeah. Yeah, the 8. So launch me 40 feet. Oh, ah! Right there. Oh, great. <laughs> Sorry, it takes you right up into melee. And then for me. Whee! Oh! Great. Okay. Love it. Um, and so then the hands follow you. Oh. Do I get an up? No. Okay. With that, uh, we go to Wilhelm. All right. Uh, I'm hasted. And so I'm going to bonus action dash. <laughs> Thank you, Your Majesty. So with with lightning speed, <sighs> I just start running towards... It's like uh, a fire trail. Yeah, it's just like, whoosh, you just see, yeah, absolute light speed. I'm like, magic, wow. Um, <laughs> and I come up to the pod. Does the membrane look like it could just be burst with like a sword. Oh yes, with with one of the most powerful so- magical swords in the world, absolutely. As I'm running, I like pull my sword out and I'm like running with it behind Ah, me. the ninja run. Yeah, and then I, I come down and just slash the pod open with an attack and try to, try to free um, the girl inside. Okay, make an attack roll. I, mean, I, I, I use lucky and a different die. Did like, you roll a natural one? Yeah. Uh, cool, I got a 23. Varen Thorn crashes in, into the pod, slicing it, it, it uh, giving a, a firm firm slice to it. You might need to do like the cross slice, so I'll need a second attack, se- like kind of like shink, shink, so you've got the, the, the cross to like open it up. Luckily, because I'm hasted, I can bonus action dash and take two yeah. attacks. And I rolled another natural one. Okay. I'm gonna use another luck point. You know, this it's, is... That's how you stab somebody, by accident. <laughs> this is not the time... Okay, cool, I got a 26. Um, okay. And, I, you've, like, and I've used... I'll save your sister! <laughs> yeah. You Ooh. slash the pod twice, and the liquid quickly drains out, flooding out forward as uh, as it ejects um, Heidi from, from the fluid, and she lands in a ball on, on the ground, uh, coughing, and but mostly unconscious. Just putting a hand on her shoulder, I just say, you'll be okay, and then turn, wielding my sword towards the enemies. Okay. Rudy, it is your turn. As everybody's whisked. Oh, hold, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, I have to do, take my epic action after oh. uh, everybody. So, Wilhelm. Oh, yes. Hi. Um. So, I have my contaminated hands in play right now. Um, and so one of the contaminated hands with, um, with a forceful, uh, with, with, with an array of force, can it, it, they have a 40 foot speed. So can it get up to Wilhelm or can it not? No, uh, it can't. No. Can the other one get to Rudy? Uh, e- yeah. yeah. Okay. It's going to race up to Rudy and just give the ultimate backhand. <laughs> Uh, um, and so, um, it, uh, it's going to just make a full-on spell, spell attack against Rudy, uh, getting a 28 to hit. Yes. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) 
Uh, so what? this is 4d12 damage. That's a lot. Nah, I mean, it might be 4. It could be 4 damage. Uh, it's 15. That's 15, 15 uh, necrotic damage. Yep. <laughs> I just, now it is Rudy's turn. And then she growls. <laughs> um, are these hands considered like creatures? They are creatures and they can be attacked, yes. Okay. Um, okay. Um, then I just <laughs> I say as everyone <laughs> has run away and this hand has come and slapped me like, this whole thing started with brains. It ain't ending with brains. And uh, I am going to actually cast Fireball kind of in the middle here. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So I believe you should be able to get the fireball to hit the creatures without uh, getting any of your friends. And in I'm the... hoping, is it able to hit this, uh, let's see, like this thing too? Uh, yeah, we'll say it can. On the edge. Yeah. Okay. okay that's yeah. yeah. On one of the shield generators. Okay. <laughs> so I need to make saving throws for my, uh, my creatures. Um, the floating bobbing brain gets a natural 20 on its saving throw, but the other two fail. Yeah, Rudy. Big Rudy. Ooh. <laughs> I like that. I like all those sounds. <laughs> a lot of fives, a lot of sixes. Uh, yeah, I don't want 36 my... yeah. fire damage. 36 fire damage. Yeah. So that actually completely burns away the two small uh, brains. Woo! Uh, they're destroyed. Thank you, Rudy. <laughs> um, oh. Now the other creature, um, it did make it save, so it only takes half damage. Um, and that, uh, uh, and the other, uh, so the shield generator, it, mm -hmm. uh, as the fireball races into it, you can see that it is it is damaged, but it's going to need a couple more solid hits to take it out. Mm. Um, okay, so then I am going to action surge and take some hits at this hand in front of me. As well. nice. Okay. Uh, get my bless. Against the contaminated hand. Uh, twenty-five to hit. That does hit the the, the hand. Um, that is 27 damage. Okay. Ooh. I get bless on every. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 18 to hit. That misses. Mm. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay. That was a 14. It, the die hit it. <laughs> yeah. Into a crit, but it was a 14. Um, so it's just 20, 28 to hit. Okay. Yeah. As you damage the hand, oh. you cut into it. And almost immediately, the magic completely heals it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, the hands can't be. <laughs> Can they be captured? Can we catch these hands? It's gonna catch these hands. It is as if second. the psionic power of Everett Freed sustains the, the these hands. Um, uh, and well, under normal circumstances, they could be attacked and damaged, such as is the mutated might of whatever Freed has become. That um, that these these hands um, seem like they could take a, a an inordinate amount of punishment before being destroyed. Mm, strong hands. Strong hands. Strong handshake. Never. Uh, uh, unfortunately for you, though, uh, the hand, that, as, as you attack it, it reforms, and it just goes right to grab you, Rudy. Oh. Uh, so it's going to make a grapple, um, and it has advantage on the check. Um, so an opposed strength check. 27. I get a 28. Oh. Can she use bless on it? Or uh, it's oh, a strength a... check. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not an attack. I yeah. haven't used my reaction yet. Silvery barbs. Mm. I rolled a natural 20. Aww. Aww. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Silvery barbs is a broken spell. <laughs> I'm gonna give myself advantage on whatever yeah, the yeah, next yeah, 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 thing yeah. is. Okay. With that, um, wow, I have lost a lot of uh, my minions uh, quite quickly. Um, <laughs> Someone can roll me a d6. Not me. I know how to roll ones only. 
Two. Uh, two? Okay. Well, in that case, um, we're going to have a, another little little guy Aww. march from the pool. Oh, baby. <laughs> Just an itty bitty little thing. I imagine, does he come out and then he does like the shake of yeah. all the water? <laughs> yeah. And he falls over. Why friend <laughs> shake? <laughs> um, but, uh, um, so that's its action to simply emerge from, from the pool. Um, but uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna mess you guys up with the, uh, the other monster though. Oh no. We'll see. Um, all righty. Um, it is going to make two attacks with its Eldritch Beams. Um, and so... Which one is it? Um, this tentacle guy, or...? Yeah, that tentacle, tentacle guy. Um, okay. If I'm completely still, he can't see me. Yeah, that's the rules. Yeah. Um, first, it's gonna teleport away from you. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, into, I can't believe that works. Into the middle of the room. <laughs> uh, no, the other middle of the room. Yeah, there. Um, <laughs> no, it's dead. And then what it's going to do, uh, actually, it is going to use its um, warp call ability uh, to teleport Heidi <gasps> back into a pod. Oh, <laughs> hey. The same pod? Uh, no, we're going to go for the one at the opposite end of the room. Oh. <laughs> this pod doesn't look big enough. Okay. Uh, she just jammed in. Yeah, like, Heidi does not make her save. Um, I just told her she would be all right. Why, Why would you make me lie? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, so that, that's what it's going to do th this turn. And finally, we go to Ava. Okay. Well, that thing is... Ooh, I want to nice. do things with my turns, but I instead... Well, okay, it's going to... If I walk away from this hand, it's probably going to get to do something to me. Uh, no, they actually can't take reactions. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh. If I, it would be reasonable for me to know that, but I'm going to come over. I just need to get close enough to Rudy to cast haste, but I'm going to go towards Heidi, mm -hmm. so I'll do an angled... My movement is, what, 30 feet? Is that a normal human movement? This pod yeah, is destroyed. Um, and this Is this 30 feet? Oh, yeah, yeah. This should be. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to go... Okay, so I need to be within... Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can triangulate that. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> And I would like to cast haste on Rudy. Alrighty. With my spell scrolls. Rudy is hasted. Yay. Okay. No um, Freed uses uh, their next epic action to crush Rudy hey. uh, in in the contaminated hand. Uh, Rudy, you automatically take twenty bludgeoning damage, okay. and I need a Constitution saving throw against contamination. Saving throw. Yep. Bless. Bless. <gasps> 27. You do not gain a level of contamination as the hand crushes you and fills you with eldritch energy. Um, with that, we go to the top of the round. At the top of the round, you feel a shuddering in the chamber as if Freed is beginning to enact a very powerful spell. And suddenly you notice some of the loose rocks and stones and bits of gravel in the chamber begin to lift up and start floating and you feel like bits of your hair starting to float upwards and even your your loose possessions as if Freed is beginning to try to unbind gravity itself from oh, no, the chamber. No, there's all these spiky delirium crystals on the ceiling! Freed is controlling the hands and casting a spell, but we don't know where Freed is currently. I mean, you can guess. The brain trapped in the shielded water? I mean, assumingly, but that means that we need to destroy the three things before we can stop anything that Freed's doing. Right, mm -hmm. but also the, all of the people are on a ticking clock in the yeah. pods, and then there's a worm! Do you go for the foe or save your friends? <laughs> Split the party. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we, we will have to divide and conquer here, it seems. We're yelling across the room. <laughs> uh, that's what I yeah, we'll have to prioritize. One of the shields has been damaged slightly, but not destroyed yet. Uh, so with that, we go to Wrath. The membrane itself, is it, like I know I know Wilhelm had to slash it, but could people travel through it? Like, on their physically, own Physically? Yeah. Um, physically, probably no. 
uh, unless you are very strong and want to like punch into it to grab somebody. Like they can be damaged, they can be ripped into, um, and if you are able to phase through solid objects, certainly. <laughs> Right, and as I said, when you telekinetically pu 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 pulled someone out of one, uh, they were able to, um, like, you were able to use that to rip them free. Is there a second person? Yes, yes. there's two large. There's two large pods that contain right. three people. If one person's ripped out, though, the other two remain in the pod. It doesn't drain. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they're it, also it, plugged in by the temple too. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. You can kind of imagine that, that that's like a cluster of three pods right. rather than like one big pod that three people are, Understood. People are Thank in. You. Oh, and I should should uh, should uh, note that uh, every time Freed takes an action, I'm going to mark off one transformation point on one random victim. Um, one of the, the simulacrum, where is the simulacrum of Freed? Uh, it disappeared. Oh. When you cast a spell with the ring of spell storing, is that an action? Uh, it is whatever action. Y yes, it's an action. It's whatever the spell normally is. Yeah. Okay, got it. I'm going to... So we have the two mini generators and the big generator? Uh, they're all three generators. Okay. Yeah. I want to use my telekinesis mm -hmm. and grab a big chunk of delirium off the top of the ceiling and drop it. Nice play. Onto one of the generators. Okay, nice play. Give me a spell casting ability check. Uh, I get a 20. Alrighty. You wrench the shard of delirium free Just... and send it crashing down into one of one of the generators and it collides with an explosion and I'm going to have you roll me um, <laughs> an arcane anomaly. Yay! Uh, for sure, for sure. Um, I think in this case... We're gonna use the the new table, and I want you to roll me um, a d3 and subtract one from whatever you roll. So a d4 minus one minus yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. So I got a two. Okay, so it's just gonna cause one one arcane anomaly. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. And d20. Yep. Yeah. Uh-oh. What'd you roll? I roll a one. No! A greater arcane anomaly is triggered instead. <laughs> oh, God. oh, no! Okay, roll it. Maybe it'll Another d20? More here. Uh, no, uh, this is a d10. D10? Oh, please oh, be no, there. Oh, the fruits were the only good thing Lofty said. <laughs> yeah. No, there's one other good thing, but most of them are... Uh, Out of ten. I get a ten! Oh, no. <laughs> Why is he looking around? <laughs> No! Ah! No! No! I'll save everyone. Unless it's on our side. You okay. all watch as Wrath concentrates on the spell and pulls the delirium crystal down to the generator, destroying it with a thunderous crash. Yay! As he does so, a conduit of eldritch energy fires out from the delirium crystal and strikes Wrath in the chest. <gasps> and you watch as his skin begins to crack and burst, and his skin and body explode in a shower of gore, <gasps> oh! leaving behind the majestic form of a young delirium dragon. <gasps> <laughs> what? <laughs> uh. It is a dragon with delirium for skin um, and crystals like spines coming coming out of it. And Wrath, you look down upon your new form. <laughs> Bruce is gonna love this. <laughs> oh my god. Here are Are you in control? Is this, is this one a... that's considered good result? <laughs> You you now use the game statistics of a young gold dragon, except your breath weapon deals necrotic damage, and um and can cause contamination. Oh my god! God, <laughs> we have a dragon. It's canon now. Oh my god, that was a great idea. Holy crap! <laughs> Am I still concentrating on telekinesis? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> telekinetic dragon. <laughs> I'm oh sure everything's God. fine. Okay, oh. I'm pretty sure everything else on the list is terrible. <laughs> and we must have gotten the only two good results. <laughs> okay, just 
I know that I know that I helped write this, but I'm 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 foggy on the on the specifics. Oh, all the other ones are really bad. Yeah, but also this is like he 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 will turn back. Cool, great. <laughs> I'm a dragon now. We know He'll dragon. be in this form for an hour. Young gold dragon. Oh no, and then something worse happens. It's okay, I study contamination. <laughs> I, I'm a young gold dragon? Yes. Oh my god. Oh yeah. I swear we just dealt with dragons. <laughs> I'm gonna eat a brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, That's so my turn. one of the shields is fully destroyed, and one of them is partially damaged. Uh, Wrath, um, with uh, with with that, um, Freed is going to use his uh, epic action to crush Rudy again, dealing another twenty damage, and I need another saving throw. Twenty-three. You do not gain a level of contamination, but I will apply a. Uh, level of uh, transfer. Uh, so basically, all the people in the pods have three uh, have three levels of contamination, um, at least. And so, uh, five of them are at four levels of contamination so far. Okay. <clears throat> um, with that, we go to Wilhelm. Okay. You're still hasty. Yeah, I'm still hasty. Yep. Uh, so I run to the next pod, but as I do, I run by one of the conduits. Yes, one of the shield conduits. So again, with my sword out, as I run by, I slash at, is it is it mechanical or? It is crystalline, mechanical, and flesh all at the same time. It is it is truly an abomination I of uh, science, magic, and <laughs> occult energy. I draw my sword and slash across whatever place looks like it has the most flesh and wires. Okay. 22. Okay, that is a solid hit. Roll me the damage. Can I, I can sneak attack it, because I'm one-on-one yeah. on one with it. Yeah. 37 damage. Okay, Ooh. the blade, Varenthorn, um, crashes into to the pillar. And as you do so, so, wires, bits of flesh and mucus fly everywhere, but it is not destroyed. I'm still, it's damaged, and that's all I wanted to do. I'm, and I'm gonna use my other two attacks okay. to uh, open up this pod. Okay. And hopefully not roll up. Oh, I crit. Okay, the critical hit, you slice down the middle and the pod opens. The the occupant, uh, the castle cook, uh, um, spills out of the pod. Nice. Nice. And the pod's destroyed. That pod is destroyed. With my second attack, I'm gonna turn to little baby brain. Okay. And I crit again. <laughs> uh, roll the damage, but I think the baby brain is probably, uh, um, yeah, that's a splitting headache. Maybe we could have fixed him. <laughs> no. No. We could have thrown him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 50 damage. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, as, as I run, I slash through the wires, keep the swing going, slash open the pod, and then I just turn and I see the little brain and I go, ah, and I stomp on yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the legs just go push out. Yeah. yeah. Sploosh. Sploosh. Splat. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, uh, with with that, I think, um, you know what? I'm going to use my next epic action to send my other hand over to grab Rudy. And the, the other hand grabs Rudy and the, the hands position themselves so that they're going to rip Rudy in half. No, Rudy! Uh, and with that, it is your turn, Rudy. Uh, okay, uh, I am going to use Misty Step. <laughs> yeah, I'm there. And I'm gonna move. Just as you feel like you're, like you hear the crack of your spine and you teleport out and the hands just kind of go yank. Uh, oh. Um, oh. J just in the nick of time. No, over here. And then I am going to use my, is that 30 feet? That's a lot. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, yeah. you should you should be beside you Ava, because Ava was was in thirty feet to haste you. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah so, essentially here. Okay. Well, I'm gonna run over here right. anyways because I am hasted. So I'm gonna use my hasted speed to get to the corner where I see a pod and start to slash. The Alrighty, pod. so it's gonna be yeah. 
Do you want to roll all your hits first? Uh, 29. Okay, 29. Uh, 26. Mm-hmm. Uh, 32. All right, with three hits, you slash the pot open, uh, and Heidi, uh, as, as well as, as the uh, the castle stable boy, um, uh, uh, are emerge from, from the pod, both unconscious. And then, nice. with my extra action from haste, I am going to dash to the next pod. Over here. Okay. And then, yeah, stay. <laughs> Alrighty. Nice, Rudy. Three more. Oh no! Brains, brains emerge from the from the pool. Um, that is their action, but I still have uh, big dude over here. Mm -hmm. um, and the what they will do is they are going to try to use Warp Call to teleport Ava into one of the pods. No! no. Make a Charisma saving throw. Charisma saving throw. Okay. This is just gonna be whatever's on the die, really. 18! You resist. You still take 10 psychic That's damage. So disappointed. <laughs> uh, you still take 10 psychic damage, but you're not teleported into one of the pods. Nice. Nevertheless, um, as more energy is imposed on uh, on the pods, the gentleman in uh, that pod, that single pod over there, is at five levels of contamination, um, and the occupants of that pod that are still there, they're both at four, and the occupants of that pod are also all at four levels of contamination, so that you're all aware. Okay. Um, with that, um, we go to. Ava. Oh my god, I have so many cool, exciting things I could do, and I can just do one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a... So these are physical hands? They are hands made of pure octarine force magic. Okay. And, like, bound together with, like, flesh. Okay, so just... Tell me if for some reason in my genius wizard brain, yeah. this would not work, but I'm thinking about casting force cage around them. Would that contain them? Yes, it would contain con contain them. Because it's made of, it's also made of magical force. If you give me an arcana check. Arcana check. Uh, so 18. These are the creation of a spell, of a contaminated spell, no less. So they oh. could actually be destroyed with the spell magic. Oh, that's way lower level. It would be way better. <laughs> but probably not both at once, huh? Yes, one one at a time. But dispel. But I got big stuff. I want. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll cast a spell magic on uh, one of the hands. Okay. Um, it is the product of a fifth level spell. Okay. So do you want to upcast dispel magic to automatically succeed, or just use the third slot and roll it? Okay, focusing your expertise of contaminated magic, nice. you know how to unbind the spell perfectly, and with your expertise, one of the contaminated hands is just wiped away and it collapses. Yeah. Ah, and then, uh, okay, yeah, that's it for me. Nice job. Um, well, seeing that- well, I guess I should also move, maybe, because I'm not currently in range of anybody, so I'm gonna just go like, like that way. Okay. Just to try and get well, towards Heidi and away from Reed Heidi. is simply going to use his next action to contaminate the gentleman at six levels of contamination, no! who in the pod cracks and their head explodes out into an array of tentacles. This guy with the pantaloons? Uh, no, the, oh. the dude in the pod. Oh, yeah. the dude in the pod, right. The dude in the pod. <laughs> the pod dude. <laughs> the pod dude, and emerging out is one of the far dwellers. Does that destroy the pod? Uh, it does not destroy the pod. Oh. But it but does exit the pod? Yes. Rude. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, safe in that guy. Uh, so we go now to the top of the round, and this is the moment where gravity breaks. Ah. 
Everfried casts Unbind Gravity. Um, and so Freed allows to control gravity in a 100 foot cube, which is effectively the entire room. And at the start of each turn for the spell's duration, Freed decides which direction gravity uh, pulls within the area. Um, since the brains have a climb speed and the far dwellers fly, they are basically not affected by the change in gravity because they can climb along the floors and ceilings. You um, fly. And so all creatures and objects that aren't somehow anchored to the ground in the area fall in the direction that you choose, which is into the ceiling. Um, and so I, um, unless there's something nearby you that you think you can grab, I need, uh, if there's something nearby you that you think you can grab onto, I can get a dexterity saving throw for you to try to avoid falling. The wall? Chris, can I grab the wall? Actually, you can? Wilhelm? Yes, you can. I have really nice boots. Right, you stick to the ceiling. Or the, or the ground, ground in this case. The new ceiling. The new ceiling. The yes. new ceiling. <laughs> yes. So I feel myself, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're like, you can't, you're not touching your feet anymore. What are you going to yeah. do, Ava? I'm going to use my reaction to cast Featherfall because also there's Heidi and the stable boy right now. Very me. smart. Yes. Um, so I'll grab these three and then it's within 60 feet, right, for Featherfall? Featherfall? So I can do up to five people. Pantaloons is, guy? Is, Pantaloons guy or Rudy within 60 feet? Rudy's, Rudy's 60 feet for yeah. sure. Okay, yeah. then I would like to... How many can you do? Five. So Pantaloons one, guy four, is the... But Pantaloons guy. Pantaloons he, guy? He's the castle tailor. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> is, he, uh, is he... Is he... That's 40. And then what's this one? 30. 30? I'll, so, I'll give it to you. Okay, then I will, I will cast it on those five people. Unfortunately, I think the castle librarian is... <laughs> oh, well. no. oh! Can I grab, grab him? him? Give me a dexterity save. You get advantage because you're oh, hasted. I get advantage because I'm hasted. Uh, that's going to be 18. 18? As, as he falls, you take your hand and you grab onto him. So you're from the ceiling and this unconscious uh, uh, little, little old man of a castle librarian and archivist is just dangling unconscious as you're, as you're basically holding, ho yeah. holding onto him from falling in, into that. So the feather fall helps everyone fall uh, softly into the, the delirium crystals. Right. So oh, does anyone end up falling and getting I mean, everybody who's in a pod is safe, right? Yes. So yeah, I think that's... Wilhelm saved people, Rudy got everybody. saved, Ava saved Okay. three plus herself and Rudy. What Alrighty. the ceiling? Uh, the, the, we're counting the ceiling as being uh, basically 60 feet up. Yikes. Okay. Because I could see some really gnarly, like, when you fall into a ceiling. Oh yeah, you spikes. fall into a yeah. ceiling of delirium spikes. Yeah, that was going to be a whole bunch of damage and contamination, but uh, oh, God. I guess. so fast. <laughs> <laughs> now how do we get back down is the problem because all the stuff we need to do is You're just like, Whoa. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, well, everyone's 60 feet away now. <laughs> yep. Wrath, it is your turn. Um, I, as a dragon, uh, swoop around beside the great Wilhelm. Mm -hmm. This is wild. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I want to use my breath weapon and I'm going to try to get you know, I'm gonna try to go here. I'm gonna try to get the brains, and then as uh, at least one, if not both, of the pillars. Um, so I have a 30-foot cone. Yeah, I I think I'll I'll allow one of the pillars to get hit. Okay, I'm gonna do uh, the one that's not damaged. Both have been damaged. I'm gonna do the this one, so I don't the far one. Okay. So I'm gonna position myself here to get the brains. I want to get the brains and the, and the pillar. Okay. And the one pillar. What's the DC on the breath weapon? Uh, Seventeen dexterity. Uh, all the brains fail, um, and the the now this would normally cause contamination, um, but uh, in in this case they're just gonna take that damage. Uh, it's ten d ten. How many more? I have so many. Uh, uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more. Thank you, Rudy. Oh yeah. Fire burn. It, so it's not fire. It's contamination. It, it's necrotic. Yep. Gross. Fifty. Okay. <laughs> the other. Um, so uh, the other shield generator is destroyed. Yes. Um, and so all the little brains are destroyed too. Melted. Yeah, just rip it in half. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. 
and then put the, the parts down. Nice. Well done. Of course, with the shield generator destroyed, you really like rolling these arcane anomalies, don't you? I do! <laughs> Not a one! 19. Okay. It's really exploring the whole field. Um, wicked creatures flutter around the triggering creature. You are surrounded by the Spirit Guardian spell, which deals necrotic damage and harms all creatures except for you. Oh, no. The spirits taunt and jeer at you. <laughs> can I... The uh, Yeah, uh, can I, as this happens, uh, ascend into the air to save Wilhelm? Yes. Sure. Uh, so as I realize that these things, and it starts like chewing away at the <laughs> at the librarian, I'm like, oh! <laughs> Fly away a little bit. And so they're just ghosts that are insulting you this whole time. Yes, insulting ghosts. The, the ghosts of your yeah. past. Oh no. Yeah. It's all the warlocks that have ever died uh, under Bruce's. Uh... Oh, both Bruce alive. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wilhelm, yeah. it is your turn, sir. Um. You are holding a dangling old man. Okay. <laughs> I take out my trusty rope. Okay. And I... How? Because one hand is holding Varenthorn and the other hand is holding this man. You can put Varenthorn away. Okay, you sheath Varenthorn and pull out the rope? Okay. I pull out my trusty rope. Okay. And I'm going to go over to the stump of this conduit and basically tie the, the archivist to it so that he can't fall anywhere. All right. What's, what's, your, what's your lead? How much are you giving him? Um, like, he has like a foot, so he can be like. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine you kind of just like lasso around his foot, quickly lasso around the other, like you're, you're going, for, and he's just kind of dangling upside down, tie, hung, hung by his he's foot. He's like a little balloon. Is that <laughs> a single action? To I'm, gonna, him up? I'm gonna call that, um, cause you're, you're sheathing, and, and I'm gonna say that's your interaction to change what's in, in your hands, uh, and one of your, ac and your oh, action. So now you want to use that rule. No, I, I'm joking. You're well, just you're putting something away and pulling self, something out, yeah. else out, so that, yeah. Yeah. I'm just messing. Um, so, okay, I tie him up, so that's Sassy my king. <laughs> interaction action. Mm -hmm. I can still use... You still have your hasted action. My hasted action, yes. Yeah. Um, well, then I'm going to... Haste... And remember, you can call Varenthorn to your hand as you attack. Yeah. So, I... As I swing towards the final conduit, uh, Varenthorn appears on my hand, and I shoot out a beam of... Uh, a force towards it. Towards the last uh, shield generator? The last shield okay. generator. Okay. Uh, getting an 18. That hits. Nice. Can't sneak attack. 28 damage. 28 damage. It explodes. Roll an arcane anomaly. Oh! Yeah. oh. Now this guy's tired. Next time, could yeah. you could you have just let Varenthorn fly into the sky and then like suffocate? Technically, yeah, and then... yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. I yeah. guess I did not cheat. Roll, like roll an arcane anomaly. Um, I didn't know. I also get a nineteen. Uh, okay, we'll re-roll it because I want to see something different. And also, the actual nineteen is inappropriate for these circumstances. I got a seventeen. Again, that was the re-roll it. I don't want to see the same thing twice. I got an eleven. Okay, something new, something new. You are momentarily pulled into the space between worlds. <laughs> <laughs> you vanish from your space until the start of your next turn. When you reappear, you must make an intelligent saving throw. Uh -oh. uh, and um, you may gain a form of Drakenheim Madness. Um, so as, as I shoot my blade out and it shatters and I see the crystal burst, all of a sudden I am like sucked towards the crystal, and I think I'm like in a space of like floating Has Wilhelm ever thing. entered the space between worlds? Uh, there was the time that yeah. we pirated, or like we're in the cat Bruce land. Yeah. Um, but I'm just, kind of Bruce. I'm just in Chillin'. a realm of impossibilities. Okay. Like sun is square. With that, um, I'm going to have uh, Freed uh, contaminate uh, one of the occupants of that pod is at five levels, and another's at four, and all the others are at four. Um, it is gonna so Freed contaminates over there, but as the last shield generator is destroyed, yeah. 
a shudder and shake strikes the room as gravity snaps back to normal, and everyone who is on the ceiling falls again. Featherfall applies for a whole minute, and it's not concentration. Oh! Well, that's convenient. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Yay, okay, so everybody falls back down. And I, was there anyone else that was unaccounted for in the fall? Just the, li the librarian who, who, who Wilhelm did, did, did tie. Okay, so gravity broke. returns back to back to normal. <laughs> um, and with the shield generators destroyed, I'll remove them. The shield bursts, and emerging from the pool <gasps> is the contaminated brain of Everett Freed. Oh. Bristling with psionic energy, the um, horrific creature um, emerges from, from the brine pool, and as it does so, so do some more baby brains. I, do, I have some over here. If yeah, you want give more. me. Yep. Yep. Putting all my cards on the table. <laughs> I also have bigger brains if you want those. Out. No, just the baby brains. Okay. <laughs> Babies. Just the Beba brains. Just a bunch of little guys. Um, and with that, we go to Rudy's turn. Okay. Um, I turn around as I fell back to the ground lightly and see this humongous brain. And I just point, and you see lightning shoot out of my finger <laughs> in a straight line. Uh, and I'm going to cast lightning. Uh, I think bolt. you could get a few baby brains. You could probably get, get the big um, bad. I'm gonna go, yeah, you like so essentially straight through here. So like big brain, little brain, that guy over there. Nice. Tentacle man. Tentacle man. The, the, what was so the So are, are you gonna, here, here's the lightning bolt. No, this was the tailor. Okay, good. I don't know what this guy was. This was like. <laughs> How many brains do I have in the, in the line? Big brain, little brain, uh, tentacle man. Big brain gets a natural 20, little, first little brain, um, Gets a natural one. How many little brains did I Just have? one little Just brain. One. And then one. Tentacle Man. And then Tentacle Man fails. Does the little brain die? The, uh, I need the damage. Uh, for some reason, I just imagined it had like two hit points. Yeah. <laughs> Six, right? One, two, three. Nice job. No, eight, sorry, eight. Where are all my D6s? I mean, I love that you're a dragon right now. That's just, I feel less scared. Yeah, it's neat. <laughs> I'm still Pretty scared, neat. but I'm like 5% less scared. 29 yeah. damage, and okay, if there's little anything brain is destroyed. that can be set on fire that isn't worn. Um. Not really in this chamber, given the, the 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 wetness of the whole room and the whole environment. <laughs> oh. Yikes. Oh, the Freed's brain smells like brine. Ooh. Like something that's been preserved. Yeah. Um, and then I am, as my hasted... It pulses, like the blood vessels are all like glowing with e energy. The brain just kind of undulates and... and like breathes, mm -hmm. and then it, the spinal cord has kind of become an array of tentacles that it suspends on in the pool. That's so cool. Um, I am also going to, as my bonus action, as I'm getting riled up with the situation, I see it very changing, I'm gonna shift into my bestial appearance. Nice. And I get 20 temporary hit points, and I look very wolfish and scary. Okay. And then uh, with my hasted action, I'm gonna turn around and take one weapon attack against this the, the pod? pod. Okay. Okay, excuse me. Bless you. Thank you. That pod has not been damaged at all yet. Uh, eight, 28 to hit it. Okay, and the damage? 28. You slash open uh, one of the uh, one of the occupants free, and they slide out um, of of the pod. Oh, there's free. two in there. Slippery. There's three in there actually. Right next to oh, a there's brain. There's three. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Um, Freed is going to let's see. Um, I got another dude over there at five levels of contamination. So Freed is going to contaminate them, and they transform no. into a fire dweller and emerge from. From the pod. Who was that? Uh, that uh, um, that was the castle blacksmith. Oh. Blacksmiths. Yep. To my heart. Yep. My husband is a blacksmith. Well, oh. Marie's husband is a yep. blacksmith. Uh, <laughs> like, and so, <laughs> with <Yes>. uh, <laughs> with that, the two uh, far dwellers, uh, they float over. Isn't who's closest to them? Maybe me or... So, Ava, Rudy, 
dragon and, and Wilhelm is uh... <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Dragon is flying. Okay. So, um, what they are going to do is the first one is going to reach out to Rudy and pluck your puppet strings. I need a. Um, uh, Again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least I'm not there then for you to. I kill. need uh, um, a wisdom saving throw. We have advantage on yes. this one because yes. of Hero's Feast. And I have, I'm blessed. 27. Okay, you succeed. Um, and so the other will um, also try to pluck your puppet strings. One more save. Well, I seem easy to puppet, I feel like. <laughs> Um, You're just the worst one to puppet because it hurts when you axe people. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Twenty-eight. Okay, you are not uh, you are not puppeteered. Um, in in any case, um, what they will will do is they will use their remaining actions to just fire psychic blasts at you, Rudy. Um, getting a eighteen to hit and a twenty to hit. Nope. Okay, um, that is their turn. Uh, the other, the other brain over here, um, seeing is how uh, I think it's just going to fire contaminated beams at Ava, uh, getting a twenty to hit and uh, shield a twenty-two to hit. Twenty-two hits. Okay, you are hit by one of the beams and you take uh, eighteen points of psychic damage. Okay. Eee. Oh, I still have, I still have my ward. And it is your turn, Ava. Okay, so that destroys my ward, and I also take two. I need a, yeah, and it's not enough damage to make you have a chance of failing the uh, the con the concentration check. Great. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna do. This is what. This is this is what my character would do. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna come over here, and I would like to use my one eighth level spell slot. Okay. To cast demi plane. And create a door on the wall of the cavern. Cool. Uh, this door will allow medium creatures to pass through unhindered. It leads to an empty room 30 feet in each dimension made of wood or stone. I'm going to say stone. That seems good. Uh, and after casting it, I'm going to gesture to all the poor castle staff regular people and be like, go through the door! <laughs> Are they conscious? Uh, good question. They coughed. They're not conscious. Are they, Are they conscious? The people? I'll answer that in just a moment. Okay, that's fine. We can pitch them in. Throw them in. <laughs> that's what I'm tell Oh yeah. <laughs> I just- I'll, like, I'll start grabbing people. <laughs> they can get zapped back into pods. They can get turned into monsters. I feel like we gotta at minimum, Heidi. Yeah. Safe, safe room. <gasps> nice. Oh, cool. Mm. I'm just. I want to put it right here, right up against the edge. Okay. How long does the doorway remain open for? Uh, the duration of the spell, one hour, until okay. I um, when the spell ends, the door disappears, and I can. Can I choose to end the spell, or no? Um, I think that 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 it is reasonable. Um, it is reasonable for you to be able to dismiss the door. Okay, but I might not do that because if I do that, I won't be able to open it again till tomorrow. So maybe we can end everything within an hour and then lead everyone out. But I don't mm -hmm. want them to be zappable. Yeah. Can people yeah. enter it if only if you choose, or is it just no, an open anyone door? Anyone can. So can we you arcane not lock the door. Oh, I'm sure that we could. It's a door, right? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good combo. And then you could be like. The password is, I don't want to die from tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it does specifically say that it is a door, and when opened, you can pass through it. So mm -hmm. that implies that it can be closed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if the, and then the the spell is not very good at, at, at um, saying this, but I basically rule that if you're in the demiplane, when the spell ends, you can cast Demi Plane again to open the door somewhere else. Yeah, it does. It does say. Oh, you mean if you are in the yes. door? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we can all like use it as an escape. Right. We could go yeah. in there too. Yeah. 
Are the are the people on the ground conscious enough to, on their own volition, go through the door, or...? They might need to be helped at least once to get them to go. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that is a great turn. Um, great, great. Anything turn. else, Ava? Yeah. Uh, you know, all my spells are actions, so... Okay. You know. When you say help, is it like the help? Action. Action. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, with that... Um, I think that um, we're just going to... Um, Everett Freed is going to use one of his epic actions um, and is going to just... The, one of his tentacles extends out towards Rudy to attack. Mm -hmm. um, and Rudy, that is going to be a 24 to hit. Shield. Alrighty, you block it with shield. Sounds good. Important. Um, with that, we go to the top of the round um, with Wrath. Dragon Wrath. I see this brain burst out of the pool, and the dragon sort of kicks back and then pounces, digging its hind legs into the back of the, of the creature and okay. biting and clawing it viciously as Everett Freed has exposed himself. So, uh, oh, I'm also gonna check to see if I don't have a weapon. I, my breath weapon doesn't recharge, um, but I get a 13 to hit. Um, that misses the the psychic shield of uh, that protects. No. Uh, it's like almost like a mage armor, but brain armor. <laughs> yeah, His thought shield. A mental barrier. Yeah. No, I can't. C okay, 28. <laughs> that will hit. Yeah. And um, uh, only a, you know what? I can use Lucky, right? Uh, your game statistics are wholly replaced by those of the dragon. Darn it. Then uh, only a 12. Okay, only one hit then. Darn it. Okay. Uh, ch -ch -ch. So I claw into him for a pretty good 17 damage. Alrighty, Freed is wounded, but not very much. Just digging the claw in. To uh, his, uh, Freed is going to respond uh, to that by um, mind blasting you, um, I, and I need an intelligence saving throw. Um, I accept. Are dragons cool? You should. Yeah. We're mildly. I got a twenty-three. Okay. Uh, you still take sixteen psychic damage. Ah. Um, but you are not stunned. I like that. Okay. Um, and with that. We go to Wilhelm, who reappears, and I need an intelligence saving throw, sir. I feel like there's like a pop, and you just, Wilhelm was already screaming from whatever he was witnessing, so it's just like a pop in, and he's mid-scream. Yep. And he appears <laughs> from the horrors, and, I, and an intelligence saving throw? Yeah. Uh, that's gonna be 17. You succeed, so you do not gain Drakenheim Madness, Yay. but you still do take 10 points of psychic damage from the whole ordeal of being in the space between worlds. And now it is to you to act normally, however you'd like. Reappearing, looking around, and seeing a giant brain all of a sudden that wasn't there when I disappeared. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run up and I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack it. Okay, you race towards uh, um, the brain to assault it. And I get a twenty-four to hit, stabbing it right in the brainstem. Driving Baron Thorn into the stem of the brain. 41 damage. Oh! Woo! Ow! And then I'm going to take a second attack. Getting a 25 to hit. Also a hit. Nice. 25 more damage. Okay. And then I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to attack again. Going all in. Uh, even more. Nice. Varenthorn crashes into the brain of Freed, the um, sacred elven blade severing uh, um, nerve endings and cutting into uh, parts of whatever memory might be housed within Freed's, cr Freed's brain cavity. I do 21 more damage. You okay. guys don't know what Wilhelm saw in the space between worlds, but he reappears already running and screaming with his sword out <laughs> and runs right up to the brain and is just like, nah! and like 
kind of lost it a little bit for a moment there, but he didn't like what was going on, and the brain just mimicked what he was witnessing. And we don't know what you were. Freed's to. mind, assaulted physically by the by your blade, conjures a spectral octarine sword to attack you back. Oh, now we're dueling. Oh, your favorite. I get to do it. The the octarine sword duels against Varen Thorn. Um, getting a critical hit oh, oh, against no. you, Wilhelm. I lost my focus. I was too busy stabbing brain stems. I didn't see the sword appear next to me. I already used my reaction. Uh, you take 60 force damage. Whoa! You know, wait. I can use Lucky on somebody else's d20 roll, can't I? You can. <gasps> I'm gonna do that. Your last luck point? Yeah. Yeah. It turns a crit into a 27 to hit. Uh, 27, I, okay. But in that case, instead of taking all that uh, that that force damage, it's just 20 force damage. Oh. And I'm gonna half it with my roguish. I also abilities. need you to make a constitution saving throw for this is a contaminated blade. Uh-oh. 11. You fail, you take an additional I use a charge, charge of Aqua, Aqua Expergo. Okay. All right. Uh, you succeed. I have one left. Okay. Um, and that is Freed's legendary action. So we go to Rudy. Uh, I'm going to continue getting people out of this pod. <laughs> Just okay. Bark, bark, bark. In case. Um, oh. So, um, 19 to hit? That does hit. Uh, do you want me to do all, all night? 18 to hit. Also a hit. 16 to hit. Not enough. And also my hasted attack. Okay. Oh. 20. With all your attacks, you're able to cut open the two remaining pods, freeing, destroying this network of pods and freeing nice. the two remaining pods over there. There's yeah. only one remaining in uh, one of the pods. Yep. Um, anything else, Rudy? I am not close enough to bite anybody, so no. Yeah. So that freed, Actually, um... Actually, oh, can I, I can move and bite the brain? That freed the maid, um, as well as the sommelier. Oh, um, <laughs> better to have the blacksmith than the sommelier. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, my bonus, I can use my bonus action to... <laughs> Not that some lives are more valuable than others, but... I think every drink, though, from now on, because of how contaminated the water is, needs to be fermented in some yeah. capacity, yeah. so it's probably... Yeah, the, the sommelier, the brewer, basically. <laughs> yeah. We the, need someone uh, with um, that kind of expertise. The the last uh, the last victim oh, is... It, I have a... Yeah. I can use my long, long tooth strike as a bonus action to bite the brain. Okay, you bite the brain. <laughs> Um, Talk about brain food. <laughs> <laughs> the last victim is the castle secretary. Ooh, oh. uh, that yeah. is a He's cool. very diligent. He's a very quiet, mousy man. 31 to hit. Okay. Someone who takes good notes. And it's uh, 11 biting damage. Okay, you bite the brain. Um, as you bite into the brain, you uh, receive a vision of horrific nightmares. Give me an intelligent saving throw. With the D4, uh, with the D4. With the D4. 12. You take 32 oh, psychic wait. damage? Indomitable. Indomitable. <laughs> okay. I guess I keep the D4 as is? Yes. Okay. 18. That just makes oh, sense. Uh, you yes. you don't, so you do not take 32 psychic damage and you are not stunned from eating a contaminated brain. Oh I don't recommend it. <laughs> How does it taste? Very are... gamey. Okay. Yeah. Well, like a giant pickle. The <laughs> I mean, I love pickles. That's, yeah, gross. I love pickles. That's yeah. the comparison. Yeah. 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 The f far dwellers hover over um, closer, and they're going to begin by um, plucking the puppet strings of Dragon Wrath. <gasps> oh, oh, oh no! no. <laughs> I need a wisdom saving throw. That is that all in that was an option? Yeah. <laughs> Dragons are super wise. He said, hopefully. Do uh, you still get the benefits of the hero's feast fruit as a dragon? Technically, yes. Oh! Yes, clutch. Okay. I get a 25. You succeed. They're also going to pluck Rudy's puppet okay. strings. 
I am oh. a puppet. Oh, good thing. Okay, uh, 27. Okay, neither of you have your p puppet strings plucked, uh, unfortunately. I'm sad. Um, in that case, they are just going to uh, mine. Uh, well, fortunately, three of you are all in the area together there, so yeah. they're both going to use their mind scrambles on all three of you. Okay. So I need two intelligence saving throws from each of you. And if any of you are concentrating on a spell, you make the save with disadvantage. Oh, that's, uh, that's me. 19 for one of them. Okay. Uh, 24 and 10. You succeed and fail. 11 and three. You fail at both. Or sorry, 11 and five, but yeah. Fail at both. Yeah. 17, that's my second. Okay, 17 on the first and what on the sorry, second? Sorry, I think it's 19 on the first and 17 on the second. Okay, so you succeed both. So Rudy, you are going to take 20 psychic damage total. Wilhelm, you take 30 psychic damage total. And Wrath, because you're both concentrating on a spell and you fail both your saves, you take a grand total of 84 psychic damage. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh. How to kill a dragon. <laughs> oh, jeez. How many hit points does a gold dra young gold dragon have? Enough, but uh, that, that was more than half. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Suddenly, the plan to ride on your back is sounding less appealing. And you know what? Ava, you can give me a charisma saving throw. It's just his brain. Must I? Yes. <laughs> you still ride his elegant body. That's a six. I'm going to GM retcon. That little guy has teleported you into the area, so you also have to make saves against the mind scramble. Oh, oh no! Because these guys are smart, Sorry, that's two and they would have coordinated intelligence two intelligence saves. Okay. Yeah, so are, and if you're concentrating on a spell, you make them with disadvantage. I don't think I am. Uh, you're still concentrating on haste for Rudy. Oh, okay. Disadvantage would be, uh, that's a 19. It's a success. And wow, the nice. One. Ooh, God, I rolled a natural 20 and a four, but the four is a 15. Okay, so you succeed on one and take 10 psychic damage. Okay. But the second one you fail and thus take 42 psychic damage. Oh. So 52 total damage. Yes. Which means I need 52. the first concentration check you'll make automatically, but the second is a DC 20 concentration check. Okay. And because it's been caused by mind scramble, you make this concentration check with disadvantage. Oh. <laughs> All right, you're about to not be hasted anymore, sorry. It's okay. Well, is, is not okay. I should include my save Rudy die in this roll. Yes. Smart, this smart, smart. Relevant. Oh god, it rolled really poorly. Oh. I shouldn't have done that. That's a four plus nine, 13. So you fail, haste is ended, and thus Rudy is stunned. Great, sorry. No. Oh, see. how the turntables. <laughs> You think it's the the defeated these by guys? Redcon. Really, it was, it was magic. <laughs> Great. You're suddenly so tired. It is your turn, Ava. Okay. Um, I could do damage, or I could try and help protect citizens. But I feel that's my sister. Do what you got to do. So, if I were to like use my movement, go over, take the help action, I wouldn't be able to get them all the way back to the door, right? Um, basically, you just gotta. What I'm saying is that you need to spend the action to basically slap them awake so that they're aware of their situation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is that something that could be done? Uh, no, that's silly. If it's you have a way action. to bonus action something. I was gonna be like, I could slap them with a mage hand, but that's still an action. I'd let you slap them with a mage hand at range, like poke them to wake them up if you wanted to, but yes, yeah, so it would still How be an this? action. How uh, Is my action to slap them if I walk over to them? Yeah. All right, I'm just gonna walk over. Um, I'm going to, oh, oh, I'm all the way over here though. You were teleported yeah. into the area. So yeah, I actually will, uh, Mage Hand is, um, 30 foot range. Okay. So I guess I'll just, I'll, I'll walk, I'm not in, I'm not gonna get any. I'll walk over to like here. Okay. And then I will use my cast Mage Hand and I'll poke and prod, and pull and tug on both Heidi and the stable boy, if I can, because they're both in the Sure, corner, right? I'll, I'll uh, the, the two of them both wake up. They well, see the si situation, and, the and they see you slap them, and then you're pointing to the door, 
Uh, and uh, they'll act immediately and they'll run out through the, the, the demi plane to, to safety. So this is the demi plane. I think that is all I can <laughs> give do. Us, but give us a free, what we'll, <laughs> I'll do is Freed will move his hand that I've forgotten for several turns, oh. and he's going to move that hand over to the demi plane entrance. Oh. And, and the hand is just going to go over the door and block it. <laughs> Yeah, this is the this is the, this is the the demi now. <laughs> okay. And you hear in Freed's mind, there is no escape. Did they get in first or not? They got in first, but like you can imagine, they, they ran back. after it, and the hand just is like. Bam. Okay, <laughs> that's better than going in, so uh, I'm okay with that. All right, that's it for me. Yeah. The, so the hand is moving to block the the demi plane, so that no, none else can escape. Okay. We go to the top of the round with Wrath. Um. No, no breath weapon. Uh, I'm going to, I'm gonna fly over. Hmm. No, let's just go for Freed. I'm gonna continue my assault on Freed. Okay. Just to, just to get him. Uh, 21 to hit. Okay. Uh, so that's, uh, we'll do it in. Resolve all the attacks, then all the damage. Okay, so then uh, next is the claw. Only a 13. And the other claw is another 21. So okay, one claw, two hits. One. Oh. The claw. The claw. Uh, 2d10 on the bite. Oh, yeah. So first off is uh, 16 damage. Okay. And the claw is uh, 13 damage. So Alrighty. just ripping into the big old brain. The brain reverberates at the claws, and uh, Everett Freed casts Banish to the Space Between Worlds on you. Huh? No, get out of here! Look, counter spell! <laughs> okay. Um, you want a counter spell? Yes. At. Oh, God. Do I remember what level of spell was that for? This is an eighth level spell. Well, I don't have any eighth level slots left, so it's, I might as well do it a third. Okay, so it's a DC 18 to counter spell, um, banish the space between worlds. Okay, cast. Ah, uh, ah. And this is with my spell attack. Uh, you have a plus 11. But do you also have extra things that you roll? For being an abjuration spells? wizard. Yeah, it's just it's basically your spell attack modifier. Okay, so that would be plus 13 for me. Correct. All right, mm. here we go. Mm. It's a 10, so 23. Yes! Free as Freed opens a portal behind Wrath to suck him into the space between worlds, your energy, your your magical energy dispels the contamination and, and prevents the spell. <gasps> oh, God. <laughs> With that, um, we you. go to Wilhelm. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse no, me. No. <laughs> Please carry on. I'm also going to continue to just, I'm I'm just trying to get rid of Everett Freed okay. as best I can. Um, my first attack is a natural one. My second Impressive. attack is, is a 21. I hit. Yes. And my third attack is a 23. Okay. Yeah. Uh, get him. One of those is a sneak attack. Kill this brain like smoking. All right. <laughs> For a long thing, right? <laughs> I don't know. This dragon thing is maybe really weird. This is your brain on delirium. <laughs> <laughs> it's all melting and stuff. Drugs are bad, kid. <laughs> yeah, don't do drugs. For real. Uh, it has been five rounds. <sighs> oh yeah, the worm is run oh rumbling God. forward. Uh, Fifty-five damage on the Got first it. attack that hit. <laughs> Sorry, how much damage? Fifty-five. Fifty-five. Everett Freed is bloodied. <gasps> the brain is bloodied. What is that called when your brain is bleeding? Uh, yeah, hemorrhaging. Hemorrhaging? Yeah. Oh wait, it's, yeah, there's like a certain word. Another 34 damage. Okay. Aneurysm, yeah. Okay. I give him an aneurysm. As I there's deal. A hemorrhage, yeah. I give him a hemorrhage and an aneurysm with both of those attacks. Okay. And, um, yeah, that was all three, 
three attacks. So yes, that's that's me. Alrighty. Everfree duels you back with a contaminated blade. Uh, getting a 16 to hit. No, no. I parry. Oh, uh, you. Yeah. With that, we come to Rudy. I don't think I can do anything. Wait, oh yeah, you're stunned. So I, well, it says I can't take actions and I can't move. Yeah. Can I not take bonus actions or reactions either? No, because bonus actions and reactions are actions. Actions, okay. Yeah. I stand where I'm at, breathing. Like I kind of bend over like, go, go on, <laughs> go on without me. Well, Freed's gonna use this opportunity to, to turn the castle secretary into another far dweller. <sighs> no! Do you want to grab? Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. That was just so sad. Who emerges from the pod. Well, the other two far dwellers are going to pluck uh, pluck the puppet strings on Wrath. No! Uh, you know what? They're gonna pluck the puppet strings on Wilhelm and Wrath and make you attack each other. Oh, no! So I need uh, wisdom saving throws. 19. You succeed. And uh, I can't use anything from Wrath, so You had I... advantage. From the Heroes Feast. I got a 10. Uh, so you bite Wilhelm. Oh! <gasps> oh. I was wondering where this dragon came from. I thought so it was So it's an attack with advantage. Oh no! Uh-oh. Uh, I get a... One of my best rolls yet as a dragon. <laughs> 27. Thanks. Thanks for that. I, I keep getting murdered by my I'm teammates. I'm so sorry! And I'm sure I'll roll low on these two. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, 15, 15. I'm gonna half that. 15 piercing damage. Okay. Arr. Human tastes good. <laughs> then, that brain. Uh, neither of them recharge it, 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 their, uh, their AOE. So, what they are going to do is then they will use their, their actions to cast Comet Shards, um, yes. which is the contaminated version of Magic Missile. Oh, no! Um, and which, uh, What's super fun is that it does double damage than magic missile. That's not fun at all. It's super fun. Um, it's a little fun. Wait. <laughs> oh man. Can it? You have to say that because you wrote some of this stuff. Yeah. So I think uh, one of them will comet shards Wilhelm, uh, oh, and one fun, will man. comet shards yeah, Wrath. How does it feel? Um, so Wilhelm, you're gonna take twenty damage, and Wrath, you're gonna take twenty-two damage. Because I'm a delirium dragon, does that help? Um, the, the, the stats of the delirium. I'm afraid not. Not not in the not in the context of the the current wording of the effect. Uh, and how much story? Twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. It might when we actually when we actually write the stats for the delirium dragon and this greater arcade anomaly actually turns you into a statted out delirium oh. dragon. Uh, it will. But right now we're just using the stats for a gold dragon with a with a change. I'm a gold dragon with like chunks of delirium in his throat. Hmm. Uh, oh, and I got my, I still got my teleporting dude. This guy's been bloodied like for the entire combat and has been just running interference the entire time. Yeah. 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 With the beak. <laughs> oh, and I also have a bunch of little brains, don't yeah. I? Oh yeah. Um, where are my little brains? I got one. One by Rudy. You got one? There's, there's one, one by, by the, the far or whatever. And there's one by Wilhelm. Oh man. I and another one by the collapsed citizens. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's, he's... So I have four of them, right? Yeah. yeah. So I guess everyone's going to get your intellect devoured. No. Oh, no. Let's uh, let's actually try to do this. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so I guess uh, so. Devour intellect targets one creature you can see within ten feet of it that has a brain. Okay. Jokes on you. <laughs> Intelligence saving throws for everybody. For who? Everybody. They're all gonna oh, run up to each of you and try to devour all of your intellects. Okay. Do you accept a sixteen? I do. Oh, good. I do. Oh, don't forget your D4, Rudy. Okay, good. Rudy, what do you got? 11, but I have one more indomitable. I got a 14. You're good? Indomitable? Are you getting indomitable? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Worse than that. Oh What's your intelligence God. score? Uh, my save or my regular? No, your intelligence score. Yeah, uh, it's a 12 or a plus one. Oh no, what happens here? So now I roll 3d6. If the total equals or exceeds your intelligence score, your intelligence is reduced to zero, and you are stunned until you regain at least one point of intelligence. 
I get a 13. <gasps> no! Rudy! Oh, no, we need... Okay, we're, we, we go to damage control right now. The next thing that happens is bad, and we need to save Rudy. I'm like, there's nothing... Like Not to be metagaming me about it, but I, I cannot let Rudy die. How are we going to regain an intelligence point? Greater restoration. Do you have any equipment that increases your intelligence? I mean, if she can read for 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> this one? <laughs> <laughs> yep, so Rudy, you are unfortunately stunned until you regain a point of intelligence. I went, I immediately pulled that up because I was like, if this is just something you attune to or something, yeah, but yeah. no, you have to read it. No, this is... This is bad. I don't think there's anything else. Time to pull out the big guns, you guys. Use... We're gonna stop. I used my big gun to make a door. Can someone just can put me in the of, door. Can you get rid yeah, of the hand in do. front of the door? Yeah, oh yeah, I can, on my turn. Okay. Put a dragon carry a Rudy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's asking a lot. Ava, it is your turn. Okay, well, I'm going to dispel magic on this hand. Okay. Nice. Roll it. Uh, fourth level. I don't know if that changes anything. No, no. And I'm just, uh, I just, sorry. Is it a spell attack roll? No. Uh, j yep. Yeah, same as before. Okay. That is a twenty-eight. The hand is destroyed. Yes. Okay. Get out of here. Um, that's my action though. <laughs> so there's that. Uh. All right, I guess I'll just use the rest of my movement. I mean, I can't, I can't do it. Rudy will have to be moved. Um, yeah, Rudy would have to be physically moved. So I'm just gonna get over to by these citizens just to do something next time. Okay. Slapping you will not help. Alrighty. <laughs> will Helm, it's your turn. Freed is wounded, but Rudy is in dire straits. You see her across just completely dazed, drool, blood running out of her nostrils and her ears. I'm going to... And these, the, and meanwhile, the four creatures, basically you can see the four small brains, they're all closing in on Rudy because they all see the opportunity. So I see, as I'm like wailing on this giant brain, I see, I look over and just see Rudy get blasted and like go limp. And Wilhelm goes into panic mode and abandons everything else he's doing. He bonus as my bonus action, I disengage. You should look at the spells that your sword can cast. He's whispering. I bonus action disengage, and I move up to Rudy. There's there's no need for you to disengage because nothing can make an opportunity to attack. Oh, then I run up to Rudy. Okay. Oh. Oh, sorry. And. Looking towards the door to Demiplane, I hold up Varenthorn as I like, I kneel down and like pull Rudy in towards me and I'm like, I got you. And I'm going to cast Thunderstep with all the brains around me and Thunderstep Rudy and I. Yeah. Through, I, I don't know, there's like, I feel like there's some cool, I don't know, I yell, Varenthorn! And, okay, and, and with a crack you go in, you send Rudy into the Demiplane. Yes. Yay! Okay. And you still have your hasted action and well, like- Also I blow up all of the little brains. brains. Oh yeah. Blow them up. Are they moved over? Are they moved? You said that they all surround yeah, them, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So they all fail their saves. <gasps> Yay, Wilhelm. Uh, whoa, uh, on 3d10, you take 28 damage. The brains oh. explode! Oh. Ah. So, so that was just movement in a single action. Yes. So I- uh, you, And you've only used 30 feet of movement. So I run out to here, and using Varenthorn, I shoot a beam of force blast at this little dude. Okay. Getting a- uh, 25. It's a hit. 28 damage. It's destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. And then, just popping a little bit more. Um, with my final hasted action, I shoot a beam at 
one of the tentacle dudes. Okay. Amazing. 20, 21 to hit. It's a hit. Uh, tw- uh, 19. Uh, that one t- took damage from the lightning bolt earlier and is killed. Oh, Yay! What nice. a turn. Wow. Amazing. That's uh, my king. <laughs> it's the haste. It, yeah, <laughs> it's the haste. It's the haste. Okay. Thank Wilhelm, you. great you. turn. King. That's so nice. Sorry, Rudy. You're basically, okay. you're kind of effectively taken out at this point. Are you? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, but I haven't been crowned yet. So, oh, right. it's, you know, just It's all based on the rolls of the dice. Your support. We, we have okay. to. Okay. Uh, Accurate. I feel like I should retract it. The far dwellers uh, move over Four, to. Far, oh yeah, there's two. There's, there's two, there. and they both try to pluck your puppet strings, Wilhelm. They're you like, can that try. Powerful. Okay, first one. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. How is? I got get... two ones. Okay, so you have to use your speed to move over to Wrath, and stab Wrath. With advantage. Uh, hey, because he's. I assume because Wrath is attacking I'm the dragon. I'm the brain. I'm like yeah. latched onto the brain. With off. advantage. Yeah. Yep. You stab me in the tail. Here Fortunately, they can't for- force you to sneak attack. Oh. Good. I've already used my. Well, no. No, because it's not your turn, so you put. Oh. I rolled. A, I rolled low, but it still might be enough. What's your AC? You tell me your roll. Twenty. Eighteen. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So yeah. Stop. Ow. Uh, twenty damage. Okay. Okay. Uh, they're gonna pluck your puppet strings again. Uh. Is anyone bloodied? I'm very bloodied. Oh goodness. As a dragon. Eleven. Uh, yeah, but are you just to hit? No, so that's my save. Oh, so then yeah, you get to attack Wrath again. Oh. Polymorph Yeah. Just, with dragon. advantage again? Yep. I kind of feel like if you die as a dragon, you die in real life. That's the vibe I get. Oh, I rolled way better this time. Thank you. Better is in worse much or better is in better? Damage, much Are you damage? sure I can't sneak attack him? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> oh, this one was also a way better roll. Nice. Um, Baron Thorn burns. Uh, 29 damage. <laughs> and then both of them are going to Comet Shard's Wrath. Oh, that might be enough. Uh, the first one uh, is 20 damage. Oh, yeah. And the second one is uh, 20 damage. Okay, so what happens when I'm reduced to zero as a dragon? The form of the dragon melts away, leaving behind Wrath. Hooray! Because it's effectively true polymorph. Oh. So, true polymorph when you're reduced to zero. Wrath just... with hit points or wrath on Wrath with hit points. Oh, that's yeah. great. Does the damage carry over? No. Amazing. Or any remaining damage, yes, it would. Yes, okay. So, yeah. I, I've calculated that on. So, I've taken the... Incredible. Sorry, Delirium Dragon. <laughs> my my claws retreat out of the, the, the beast and I'm... You're just... just a dude on a brain now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm, I'm still yeah. gnawing. <laughs> gnawing on the brain. So uh, yeah. <laughs> With that, we go to Ava. All uh, right. All right. Uh, I gotta. It's God, I wanna do damage so bad. Then do it. I'm gonna do some damage because as much as I want to wake these people up, I'm just I haven't gotten to do any damage yet. Okay. Um. Yeah. I would like to. Ah. Nope. Can't fireball. Rats there. Uh, you could probably, it, the, the brain is huge, so you could aim the fireball. Oh, and get these guys. Oh, yeah. That's what I want to do. I can avoid the tailor and avoid wrath. I'm kind of back riding the brain. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. now, I'm like. Slipping off. Of yeah, I imagine it like he's effectively like here. All right, so I'm going to get Everett Freed's brain and the two far callers. Nice. nice. And you're casting fireball? I am casting fireball. The lowest level I can cast it at is... Uh, sixth. <laughs> so that's nice. what I'm doing. Okay. Do you want to invoke your potion of maximum power? Yeah! I forgot about that! Oh, no. 11d6, <laughs> so that's 66 damage. Yes. <laughs> What's the spell save DC for dexterity? Uh, 21. So even though I rolled a 19, so both the Fire Dwellers fail, and so does Everett Freed's burn. <gasps> 
<laughs> so it's 66 it's not your match damage. Card. You're like, cast. <laughs> Um, the fire, like you feel the the energy in your body from the 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 syringe, and the fireball just envelops the area, um, vaporizing both the far dwellers and severely nice. damaging Everett Freed's brain. Yeah, great, love it. That's it for me. Uh, Wrath, it what? is. Uh, um, Everett Freed in that moment shudders, incredibly wounded, and lets out one last pulse of psychic energy uh, at all of you. I need intelligent saving throws. Oh. I'm assuming this doesn't go through the door. No. Okay, good. Eight. I already do not have <laughs> much intelligence. Uh, seven. 30. <laughs> 35 psychic damage for the two of you. Ow. Um, 16 for you. Okay. Wrath, it is your turn. I feel around on the brain, mm -hmm. and I find the medubla obligata, <laughs> and I poke my finger up in there, and I cast Finger of Death. <laughs> <laughs> What's the spell say? <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> con save 21. Uh, I get a 20. He's gonna take 7d8 plus 30 damage. Do you need some d8s? I do need some d8s. Oh, here, here, here. I got How four. Many? That's oh. perfect. How many? Here, that's perfect. Thank you. You good? Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I hope you forget how to read. <laughs> 20. <laughs> yeah. uh, 62 necrotic damage. Ow. Ow, my brain! <laughs> the brain just shudders and like turns gray as, as, uh, 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 uh um, and it, it responds back in, in kind by lashing at you with all of the intellect that it, that it can muster as the octarine sword that is beside you comes to crash into you. Oh no. Uh, getting a 21 to hit. Uh, that is a hit. That's my DC. That's my uh, it's, no. uh, it is 30 force damage. Ow. And then I need a constitution saving throw. I get a 20. Okay, you succeed. <laughs> Wilhelm, it is your turn. After having my string, my puppet strings plucked multiple times and realizing the situation we're in, seeing the, f the finger of death ripple through the brain. Varenthorn appears in my hand as I yell out, your reign of terror is over, Everett! And I strike him in the brain. Deal some brain damage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, getting a 30 to hit. Do you wanna roll all your hits? Getting a 23. And another 30. For all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so many dice. So satisfying. 44 for the first hit. Nice. Okay. 18 for the second. Uh, 27 for the third. As you drive your blade into Freed's brain, severing the, 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 the neurons from one another, the brain begins to collapse, shudder, and as pieces of it fall apart. In, in the final moments, the, the brain collapses back in, into the brine, brine pool as a pulse of energy reverberates through all the delirium in the chamber and it all turns a shuddering octarine red. <laughs> um, and as the and as Freed dies, um, the chamber begins to shudder and shake as whatever psychic energy was keeping the water out of this room <gasps> is broken and you hear the sound of rushing water flowing for, forward. Oh my God. We need to get Where all the survivors. Where does it come from? From here or there? It's gonna come from there. Cause part of me is like, well I could, I, s I say we get all the survivor. Wait. I was just thinking. Let's all go in the demi plane. Yeah, we could do that, but we won't be able to get out. We just take a long rest in there. That's true. It's a 30 foot room. 
All right, let's get everybody. What were what else were we gonna do? I was gonna say I could cast Wall of Force to block that, but I don't actually know if that would stop the water from coming in. There's also this pool, and also I don't. I I only have. I mean, I could upcast it, but like it's like my last. Alrighty, skills. can I cast Mass Suggestion to Ooh. tell everybody in the room to wake up and, and run? Into yes, it. yes. And I'll, and I'll like help the people that I'm near. Alrighty. So almost like an the instantaneous library. command. <laughs> <laughs> as you race for the demiplane, you close the door just as the rushing water with a thunderous crash, backed up by the massive worm, crashes into the chamber. <laughs> oh! as, as it flows in, filling the room with water, destroying the work of Everett Freed, and flooding the chamber with contaminated water as the demiplane door clicks closed. <sighs> that demi plane came in real handy. Yeah. Nice so much. Oh my god. So we'll just stay in here, and I'll just cast it again tomorrow, and we'll exit. It's yeah. gonna be a little cramped sleeping tonight, but yeah, I, thirty I, foot square room for like it's eleven people. Better this than us trying to get eleven people out in a contaminated water filled mine. Just prop me up against a wall. So when I cast Demi Plane tomorrow, uh, this uh, this is just the way I house rule Demi Plane. Yeah. Technically, you need Plane Shift to get, to out, get out of yeah. Demi Plane, um, and I kind of feel that's. I feel it's fine that to cast Demi Plane to like get so get out, as long as it's basically under under the the circumstances of Plane Shift effectively. So like. So will the door open the same spot that I placed it this time? As or? long as you're opening it to somewhere that is very familiar with you, I'm fine with that. Okay, so but, I can just yeah. open it up like yeah. that castle. Yeah. Yeah. Castle. yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not like you would know to teleport and uh, uh, and spells. Right, that's like true. That. I can always yeah. just long rest and pick it. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Yeah. What, if, what about the situation with Rudy? Is, is a long rest yeah, going to help her? I figure we, we have the Academy members back. I'm I sure have an someone idea. Someone can help. What if I polymorph <laughs> Rudy into something with intelligence? Ooh. That's so clever. That's for an hour? You, well, it, that but it's way. until you gain regain. No, a long rest uh, um, does not help you okay. in this case. Oh. So we'll have to address that. We're going to have to find somebody to help Rudy. Uh, her brain is mush. We need a great yeah. restoration. Ru Rudy, her eyes are, are glassed over, and she doesn't seem aware of any of her, her surroundings at, at all. Can I communicate with her through telepathy? It's like she's empty. It's my brain. We. Oh. But I'm wondering if like Eldrick or someone might be able to help. Yeah. Maybe. We or just need Ophelia? one. We just need one. You can't suggest that. You're mush. I'm mush. Do you? Uh, so <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. Administration is not a wizard spell, right? Is not. Do you have any contacts that know um, more divine magic uh, or? We're supposed to have somebody who was supposed to meet us who might be able to help, but I don't know if they've arrived yet, but we have to. There's also the High Flame Keeper of Toddsfeld. Now that we've saved Toddsfeld, they may be in, indebted to us. We could ask that they we'll do yes, restore Rudy. Yes, perhaps our High Flame Keeper. We'll do everything we can, because we can't leave Rudy like this. The hardest oh, thing is going to be who carries her. Because she's really heavy, and I don't know if I can. Both have telekinesis, right? Yeah, <laughs> we, like, we we puppet walk her. Out. She's that, been could, puppeted enough. Could I? Could I it's though? Would that away. would that work? Does, is intelligence one of the statistics replaced by polymorph? Um, I'm going to rule in this case that you'd polymorph Rudy into a creature, but it wouldn't fix the condition. It would only alleviate it while she's in that polymorph form and she'd have the intelligence of whatever you polymorph her into. I meant just, yeah, so that she could like... Or you carry me. I'm not carrying you. No, if you I'm polymorph If you polymorph me into something. No, you, you got legs, you <laughs> walk. <laughs> um, what am I, a taxi? <laughs> Heidi, um, Heidi is coming too and she gives you a hug and she says... I'm like super stiff and weird about it. 
Uh, uh, <laughs> this is the first time that we've ever hugged. Heidi says, what else am I supposed to do? You saved me. No, I, I no, it's good. It's, it's nice. Um, are you okay? I think so. Uh, she, she looks around at the other members of the castle staff who, um, recognizing you, there's, there's, there's grateful but terrified expressions. Many of them have been traumatized by the, the experience that they under, underwent. And she says, um, similar to how, how you, you said, I don't know if I want to talk about what happened back there. We don't, oh, we don't have to. Um. You said something to me earlier in our dream, in my dream. Was that true? Oh, yes. She kind of goes quiet. She says, I need to think. I understand. I thought about it a lot over the last few weeks, but I understand you haven't had that space. This place is weird, Ava. Yes. This place? This room? Are we trapped here? No, I made it. Uh, but we will need to stay here overnight because out there, there's a big worm and a lot of contaminated water and you all are, uh, no offense, weak. <laughs> <laughs> right. As you try to find a way to sleep on the stone floor of the demi plane, that is roll one for the day today. Ooh. <sighs> I'm feeding Rudy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm feeding uh, Bruce, and I'm feeding Rudy, and I'm feeding Bruce, and I'm feeding you Rudy. Have to cut out. A big yeah. thank you to <laughs> our <laughs> incredible <laughs> cast. <laughs> Jill, Joe, and Kelly, and our wonderful guest, Jenny T, for the clutch escape. Yeah, yes. that Yay! was so. It, I'm glad I did it. I was so nervous I was going to waste that eighth level spell slot. <laughs> it worked no, it, so well. It, it saved everybody. Yeah. Literally everybody. Yay! Uh, a big thank you as well to uh, Kyle for all of the wonderful behind the scenes. And a big thank you to our dungeon master, Whoa. Martin Martin. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That was amazing. Epic. Uh, epic. Epic encounter. Yeah. yeah. That had a lot of moving pieces. You guys had three rounds left before the worm showed up. Oh my gosh. I mean, as as you can see in our game tonight, we uh, used a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They graciously have given us permission to use them in our tabletop games, and we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. Where do we get the LED crystals from? This is the Crystal Caverns by Dwarven Forge. The amazing. The LED pieces, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Dwarven Forge. Yeah. The Elder Brain is by WizKids. Uh, as are all the other of the other minis. Uh, we also have miniatures from Hero Forge, uh, player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot, and music by Tabletop Audio. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. We can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dude shirts. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an amazing Patreon community that helps support our work. It is thanks to our patrons out there that we have been able to move into our amazing new studio space so that we can produce content with fantastic guests like Ginny D, bring them up to our studio space and get to play D&D with them uh, and do other projects like this. If you want to see more projects where we bring in cool guests to our studio space, especially projects where maybe we don't play D&D, &D, uh, consider becoming a patron of our show. The links are right down in the description below. It really helps make these kind of things possible. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons. So if you're joining us on Patreon, make sure to hop on our Discord and chat with us about all of the wonderful games that we play and uh, any nerdy topics you want. Of course, find all of our other video content over on YouTube. We post new stuff every day, including new shorts every weekday. Ginny, where can our fans and audience find your stuff? You can find it on my own channel. Not a Dungeon Dude, I just play one on TV. But <laughs> I have my own videos on the Ginny D channel. Be sure to join us next Tuesday when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time in Drakenhut.